What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to The Order. Recently, I've really been enjoying my time with Skull and Bones, pushing into Max Kingpin Infamy and beyond. It's a game that's really scratching a lot of itches for me right now, like a little bit of competitive PvP, high-level PvE co-op, and just sailing around and chilling while doing some endgame grinding. So I wanted to make a couple videos on the builds I've been using for my ships as we get ready for season one in the game. Now, there are four medium class ships currently in the game, all of which are perfectly viable for a variety of end game activities. In this one, I wanna focus on the Brigantine, which is probably the most popular ship in use now by players in the end game. And there's a very good reason why. It's the fastest ship in the game, which makes it ideal for outrunning other players in cutthroat cargo PVP and it combines that speed with the second highest hull integrity in the game and the ability to equip the maximum of five furniture slots, making it a pretty ideal choice for most activities in the game. Its core perk, Bullhorn, which gives it a bonus to ramming damage, isn't necessarily something to fully build around, but it's a nice bonus to have in your damage arsenal. Speaking of which, let's talk about the loadout. There's a lot of different ways you can approach this. What I've chosen to do is try to build an all around great ship that has good damage output, but also excellent survivability and maneuverability to allow it to thrive in just about every scenario. This build has worked well in plunders, PVP, everything really. My goal was to build like a singular ship that I can deploy in any situation, anytime, like my main vessel, uh, whereas my other ships are a bit more specialized. So for my Star Wars fans, think of this as like the X-Wing and the Rebel Fleet, and my other ships are more A-Wings and Y-Wings. So for the bow and the stern, I'm using the Fire Bombard 3s. These are super popular, great damage, great AOE, can afflict the blaze effect. You can use them on structures, just an all around great choice. I know some people actually use the Fire Bombards on all four slots, uh, but there's a good reason that I don't. For the port and starboard, I'm using the Zamzamas 3s, uh, or the Zamzams as I like to call them. Uh, they're essentially shotgun-like demi cannons that pack an absolute punch. These are absolutely incredible when you're lining up parallel to an enemy ship because they basically shotgun blast multiple weak points at once. These are devastating weapons when you're operating in close range, but what makes them so great is this perk right here, the Raider. With this, you're going to increase the charge rate of the vulnerable effect by 50%. The vulnerable effect is what allows you to get into your crew attacks. So with this perk, you're going to be able to pop those significantly more often when you attack with your Zamzimas. Now, I'm not that interested in the damage you can get from the crew attacks. Why this is important is because of how it synergizes with the major furniture piece I use on my ship. So I use the Scrapper Station. This gives you 8,000 whole health, 8,000 whole health after every single crew attack, which also includes crew boarding. 8,000 whole health is 20% of your whole integrity on your brig. This is absolutely incredible for survivability as it gives you a consistent source of healing beyond your repair kits. It, it comes in absolutely clutch if you're like on a repair cooldown and you actually have a way to get additional healing from another source. You can solo so many activities in this game because of this level of survivability on your brig. The last piece of the loadout is the Leopold 3, an excellent mortar weapon that also adds adds a nice chunk of flooding damage, which can be paired with the flooding damage you can get from ramming enemy ship with the brig for a nice one-two opener on any ship. Armor-wise, I'm going with the Black Prince, which can be obtained from the Black Market or as a drop from the Legendary Chest in Cutthroat Cargo. Uh, the Resolute Perk gives you a solid 50% damage reduction at one-third of your whole health. This comes in really clutch when things get dicey, and I like it a bit more than the brief armor buff you get on the Royal Custodian after using a repair kit, not to mention the increased mitigation from explosive and fire damage on the Black Prince. Lastly, going back to the furniture, again, I use the scrapper station as the major furniture piece for increased survivability. For the other four pieces, I use the front, port, and starboard kegs on each. Basically, it's going to give you 10% bonus damage to all of those uh, sides to your ship and a general 10% damage bonus across the board 
is something I generally like having on my ship, right? For the last slot, I'm using the Balanced Mast, which gives you a slight boost to both acceleration and deceleration, which is a great overall buff to maneuverability. Again, the theory behind this ship is just all around effectiveness that I can deploy for just about any activity and feel good about my chances. Good overall damage, excellent survivability, it's the fastest ship in the game so you can move around swiftly, can stack multiple status effects. This is a do everything ship and it's carried me through a lot of the end game activities in the game. If you're playing Skull and Bones, let me know what ship you've been using the most. If you're using the Brig, what has been the build that's been effective for you? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful or insightful at all, be sure to hit it with a like and subscribe to the channel for more gaming coverage and insight. Until next time, have a good one.